Lisa. I have an unusual page today in that we're going to have a large pocket uh, for memorabilia and the embellishments are going to look a little bit different because it's going to be something that's very themed for my particular photo, but you can adapt the sketch of course for your own embellishments and your own story. Several months ago a reporter from the local newspaper came and interviewed my husband and did an article about his uh, pinball business and we've had this happen a few years ago. One of the larger newspapers in the area uh, did an article. They even brought out their own photographer and everything and I have a copy of that somewhere, but I don't think I ever really scrapbooked it, so I wanted to be sure I scrapbooked this one. Um, I didn't take any photos while the interview was going on. I considered it, um, but I decided to just kind of uh, let them talk and not interfere. And But I did take a photo of him reading his article once it came out in the newspaper. So I have that photo. I have the article. I have several copies of it. Uh, that folks shared with us when they got it in the newspaper because they did a full page uh, spread on this. And I want to put this in a pocket in my um, album because I think that's a great place to keep your memorabilia. If you're going to keep your scrapbook albums, I tend to put memorabilia in a drawer, uh, but I try to pull bits of it out and use it in the scrapbook pages because otherwise it's just going to get separated. Who knows what's going to happen the next time we move, you know, so it's, it's something that I, it's a good way to keep track of it to keep it with the scrapbook pages. And this is not going to be real thick because it's just going to be this uh, newspaper article tucked back in in this uh, big pocket that I'm going to have. Um, I have a photo. I also have a printer here that's running low on inks. So that's why it's kind of a funny color. Um, there will be some journaling though. I want to talk about um, his impressions of the article and the um, the interview process and, and that kind of thing uh, in the journaling. And since his subject matter is pinball, I thought I would do flippers and a pinball uh, like this were a play field um, and the, uh, right below the journaling. And I was watching a Schmel video um, recently where she used some embossing powder and created this great silver effect. And I hadn't done that in a long time and it reminded me. And so I think I can make something that looks very much like a pinball to go here. I, I want a, a large title down here at the bottom. I'm, I'm kind of trying to make this kind of like a newspaper, sort of a blocked uh, look for this page. So as I say, it's very much oriented towards my subject matter, but you could use this for any of your memorabilia and have your photo or two small photos here, journaling, and then this would be a, a still a great area for embellishments down here as well, whether you wanted to do flowers, hearts, stickers, whatever that you had for your embellishments. So I think it's still a very versatile little sketch. And you'll find this over on my blog. Um, right now though, I need to go and pick some papers. Um, he's wearing a red shirt and we've also got a little bit of yellow here. I think I've got some papers that will go well with this, probably some older products. So this is going to be a good opportunity to use some designer paper here behind this photo. I can put something with quite a bit of color there and the photo will still pop on it um, and maybe work in some of my other papers. So I'm going to look for some of my older product uh, to try to work with this page. This first sheet of striped paper was from a project I completed recently, and it's not a bad choice. And then I have some uh, papers that I found on clearance at Hobby Lobby. But I'm still looking for something like that stripe. And then these, this drawer I keep, uh, I've got simple stories, I've got a lot of different manufacturers here, but they, the thing they have in common is they are primary colors with a little bit of a darker tone to them, a lot of red and navy. Um, these are the kind of colors that my husband wears around the house, and especially in the wintertime, and so that's very much where these pages end up getting used. And I really like that stripe there, that was the Simple Stories uh, paper, and, and the blue paper that also goes with it, and I happen to have full sheets of both of those. And I need a full sheet for the background for this, I can't really piece things together that much because I'm going to be doing this big pocket. I am looking for a few other papers maybe to do some of those strips along the bottom. Now my sketches when you print them out they're six inches so you just take any measurement and double it so doing that I know that I need to cut my stripe paper 10 inches by uh, and leave it 12 inches wide. 
I found some uh, chipboard to do the um, pinball. As I mentioned, I saw uh, Schmel had done this on one of her videos, and I've done this before as well, where you use your embossing powder on your chipboard. You don't really have to do anything to the chipboard first, so then just put the Versamark on there. I did not do as good a job as she did. I didn't remember to tap my extra embossing powder off, and I got it kind of lumpy. And I did two coats, as she did. Uh, in fact, I think I went back and did three coats, and I still didn't get as smooth a finish to this. And unfortunately, that was the only round piece of chipboard that I had that was the right size. I couldn't believe it in all my chipboard that I just didn't have a plain piece of round chipboard that would be a good size. But this is this one's going to work for me. I also found this border while I was in there, and I decided to just paint it red. Um, I was going to add some distressing to it and all, but, you know, Pinball stuff tends to be very pure colors. There are a lot of shades. When you go to touch up the paint on a play field, as my husband has to do, there can be a lot of shades to the colors, but they don't really have any natural distressing kind of look to them. Sometimes they do because the machines are older and you can only clean so much, but that's not typically the intent. So after perusing my collection of thickers, we are here in the Silhouette software because almost all my thickers that worked, well really everything that worked for this layout, I was missing the letter A. That's often the one that I run out of first, A's, R's, N's, um, and an A is sometimes you can chop up some other letters and make it, but a lot of times you can't. And it's because that I'm constantly running out of letters or not having the right color that I'm more and more turning to my Silhouette software. And I did a class last year on using the Silhouette for creating titles and text. We're going to do a really simple feature uh, today that I've shown on some of my other videos before, uh, but I want to share it with you again because it's a really easy way to keep your letters together and it's going to work well on this layout. We're also going to use a couple of different fonts. I want to use the title the pinball wizard because that was how my husband was referred to in the article in the paper. Um, it comes from the song um, that was on the album Tommy by The Who. So it's very well known and um, it's a good title for this layout. So we're going to uh, go over to the text tool and I'm going to do these as two different words because I'm going to use two different fonts. Now, pinball, I want to keep this in a very normal font like um, the text in the article would be. So something like Times New Roman will work out fine for this. And But I do want to make it quite a bit bigger because I have a fair amount of space here for the title all the way uh, across the 12 inches. So we're going to make that kind of larger. And this is a font that can be put in bold. So that can make the letters even larger. And I'm tempted to make them all caps. Let's see what they would look like in all caps. Well, they'd need to be, I need to go a little smaller if I do that. And of course, the lovely thing about the Silhouette software, any of your software's programs and die cutters that let you adjust your fonts is you can change the proportions and size to whatever you want them to be and then cut them out of whatever paper you want. Alright, so I like pinball. Now let's do wizard and I've decided to use one of the fonts from my collection of fonts that I downloaded from the Silhouette store um, called LW Jumble which is Lori Whitlock's uh, font called Jumble and let's make this a bit bigger as well and it the idea here is that all the letters are different fonts essentially so it's kind of a mixed bag and it makes sort of a fun look right. now one of the things I want to do with this though is I want each individual letter separated because I want my letters more lined up on the bottom as opposed to this sort of up and down thing that's going on here and one of the easiest ways to do this is to right click and weld. Weld you think of putting everything together but in the case of these letters that don't touch one another it really ungroups them so that you can move them out and whatever to do whatever you want to with them for example I can make the W bigger which I want to do Let's move pinball over. and then now it does separate eyes from their dots 
but that's okay, that dot's going to cut out separately anyway. And what I'm trying to do here is just to sort of get everything even along the bottom. And I have a reason for doing that, as you'll see in a moment. I'm going to zoom in here. Placement is also important because I'm going to be connecting these letters together in a way that will help me place them on my layout. So they're, it's not entirely like the, the dot over the eye, it doesn't matter where it is, but the other letters it does. Now the only problem is the little tail here on the D is going to get cut off. If I could rotate it some. That kind of makes a funky sort of look. And I won't lose the bottom. There we go. Now, let's pan back out here a little bit and see how this looks. Okay. Um, mostly happy, but I want to scoot this over a little bit. Now I'm actually going to end up cutting this out of two different colors, which is fine. Um, now that I have this placed the where I want it, I'm going to group it back together. Right click and choose group. This does not put it back as text. I can't go in here and edit this now and change the uh, spelling or anything, so I have to be happy with spelling before I start playing around with the the placement of these letters, but um, I can now group it together and it's easier to handle because it's say I'm going to cut this out of two different uh, papers. Before I cut it though, I'm going to add a border to the bottom of these that will help me keep them together when I'm working with them on my layout. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and draw a little narrow rectangle. Actually it can be as long as you want it to be. And let's zoom in some so you can see what I'm going to do with it. This rectangle is going to go along the very bottom of the word pinball. And what's kind of in my way here is the grid. So I'm going to turn the grid off, go into the grid tool and remove that so that I can see that this is sitting right here on the very bottom of all my letters. Now I'm going to select pinball and the rectangle and I'm going to weld these together. Choose the weld option and it puts them together. Now what will happen then is when I cut this out I can slip this part underneath some other paper on my layout and all my letters are together and I don't have to worry about lining them up nice and neat. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to create a little rectangle now this one I want the letters to be kind of barely touching. It looks like they all are. Choose wizard and weld together. Oops, my Z didn't get welded in. So I'm just going to ungroup that or undo that with control Z and take the letter, um, take wizard and I'm going to ungroup it again because apparently the letter Z is a little bit too high. So I'll just drop it down ever so slightly. And to make those kind of slight adjustments, I use the arrows on my keyboard rather than the mouse. Now I'll take everything. Let's see. Let's make sure we've got it all. And I'm going to weld it all together now. So all of these now are joined together so that they'll cut out everything but the dot on the eye. So I just have to deal with it separately like I would anyway. And it's going to be really easy to uh, manage these on my layout. So at this point, all I need to do is to select my papers and send them to cut. So I have these uh, cut out down here on the bottom of my layout and I've got uh, my painting done. I've also done some journaling and we're going to come back to that journaling here in a few moments. While I was in the Silhouette software I cut out what you know, are the flippers on the pinball machine. Uh, flippers are what move the ball. You, when you press the buttons on the side that's what moves are the flippers. And they're usually white, I think. As well as I remember them always being white. You can tell this is not my business. 
<laughs> my husband's business. But anyway, I wanted those uh, to appear, so I've got those ready, and they're going to end up with a little bit more detail to them in just a few moments. But I want to uh, continue along with this journaling for just a little bit. Something I thought might be interesting is how I got my journaling in this format in the two columns that look like um, a newspaper article. So I'm going to start a new document. And I have my toolbar turned off up here. You can turn it on and off with this little arrow, minimize it. It's called a ribbon. So I'm going to put that back on so we can see what's going on. And first thing I needed, I, I actually typed my text up first. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that. I'm just going to type in Okay, I have some text here, and first thing I'm going to do is change the margins on my paper to be what I pretty much want it cut out, to the size that I want it to be cut out when um, I'm finished with it. So I'm going to change this under page layout, size, more paper sizes, and I set my width to 4.5 inches, which was what was appropriate for mine, and about 5 inches high. I also, under margins, we go back to custom margins, I'm going to change the top margin. I can leave that, well, I can put that about a half an inch, and the bottom margin's okay at an inch, and left, we'll do that at 0.25, and right at 0.25. And you can do these whatever you want your margins to be. All right, so I have my text here. Now I'm going to select the text and go to the Columns feature and tell it I want two columns. So you just put your text in pretty much whatever size um, paper you want it to be, reduce the margins to overall margins to what you want them, and then select the text and go to Columns and change it to the number of columns you'd like. And then one other thing I need to do to make this work like a newspaper is I need to justify the text. So I've selected my text and I'm going to go back to the Home tab and go to the last option here with the different types of um, arrangement of text and choose justify and that makes it look like a newspaper so it's lined up evenly. Now there's a little more space between these uh, columns than I would like. The default I think is a half an inch in Word. So with them selected I can come up to the columns and shrink that amount of space down. That's maybe a little bit much. Get back out. Okay. So you can just play with the sizing the way you want it, and I've got more text here than, than will really fit on this page, but that's fine. I just wanted to give you an example of how this would work. Um, so you can kind of see what it would look like if you wanted to do multiple columns and you wanted to justify them and have that newspaper kind of look. So now back to putting our layout together. I'm kind of deciding what I'm going to put uh, down here at the bottom. I really like Pinball Wizard laying right on that um, stripe paper, which is not what I had expected, but I think I like that, so I may not have quite as many strips down at the bottom of this page. On the flippers, I am going to add some brads to the center of the silver piece that I cut out for each one, because there's, um, there's some... Um, components they're holding them onto the play field so that they can turn but are held down and that's what I'm trying to replicate in terms of appearance. When I got this layout done and showed it to my husband he was impressed with my flippers so I guess I did it right. I could have just gone out and looked at, at a machine <laughs> but I went from memory. It's cold. I didn't want to have to go out and, and uh, to his workshop in the cold. Alright, I'm putting down my um, Oh, pocket and I did that using some tape. I, I like a two-sided tape uh, to put pockets down so I put that on the back and then I'm going to use some Tombow adhesive to hold this chipboard at the top but I have to be careful to glue it only to the stripe paper so I don't, don't glue things down uh, too much there. And then the words are really easy to glue on because they're all in one piece except for the dot on the eye and so I just glue that in place. I've got that little um, 
rectangle to kind of line everything up and it's just makes putting the letters on super easy if you've got something that you can in, that will look right to cover up the very bottom edge of your letters and so then resting right on that strip of paper is going to work for me and I've tucked my article in and now I'm just adding a few stickers to finish off my page And I didn't end up putting the date because the article had the date. It's already showing up there, so I didn't put that in. But we'll do a few close-ups. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I really appreciate all the feedback that you leave me.